Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video I'll be reviewing the iPhone 14 Pro Max after using it enough as my daily driver to know about all that it's capable of but also about all of its shortcomings. Previously to using the iPhone 14 Pro Max I had a 12 Pro Max as my daily driver for two years and what will probably surprise you is the fact that I have some things that I liked about the 12 Pro Max more than I do about my 14 Pro Max currently. Apart from the iPhone, I also use two Android phones on a regular basis and I carry them with me every day. We are going to split this review into five categories and talk about the design, iOS and performance, the camera, the battery, the dynamic island, which is the phone's most unique feature, and finally, whether or not the phone is worth it. Okay, so first of all, talking about the design. At first, I thought I wouldn't get used to the much larger camera protrusion on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but this turned out to be a complete non-issue. Not only did I get used to it, but looking at something like an iPhone 11 Pro Max right now makes it seem like someone flattened the camera protrusion and it makes the back of the phone look kind of empty. The large camera module makes it look like it really means business and I also don't have any trouble with sliding the phone in my pocket because of it. One negative aspect of the 14 Pro Max that wasn't the case with the 12 Pro Max is how easily the stainless steel sides seem to scratch and scuff. With my old 12 Pro Max, after two years of usage without the case, I didn't have any side scuffs, while with my 14 Pro Max, I had one within the first week and I can't even figure out how I got it. It definitely seems like they changed something in the stainless steel used in the sides of the latest generation iPhone. Before jumping to iOS and performance, I want to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Today's sponsor, PCBWay, is a leading provider of high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly services. The pricing is also extremely competitive and furthermore, if you have an idea for a new project or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, even 3D printing or injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCB Way has got you covered. Click the link in the description to order your PCBs today at a very good price and with fast shipping and also to check out their new services which will allow you to create your own project from the ground up. Moving on to iOS and performance, I didn't think it would come to this point but it just seems like iOS isn't what it used to be anymore. Years ago I could count on iOS to be rock solid apps to never crash and the whole experience to be seamless. It's natural that people wanted iOS to get more and more features as it did lack in certain regards when compared to Android, but to me it seems like they partly stopped focusing on what made iOS great. One bug that I have often enough that it's pissing me off is that perhaps 1 in 20 times when I open an app it either gets stuck on the launch screen or on the screen where it was previously at in the app if the app was already in memory. It's just infuriating when I want to take a quick picture of something and then it stutters in this way. Yes, yes, the performance of the phone apart from this bug is flawless. The 120Hz screen is amazing and everything is fluid but seriously this bug just drives me crazy sometimes. And talking about performance, my god have the speakers improved. They get louder and the stereo sound is very well balanced. Jumping over to the cameras, honestly, the array of cameras and the software behind them is just impressive. The main camera has been amazing in all iPhones since the 11 when night mode was introduced, but with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the ultra wide, the telephoto, and even the selfie camera got significant upgrades. The ultra wide has always had a problem with sharpness and at night it really fell apart. I'm pleased that it's now a very usable camera both during the day and at night thanks to a much larger sensor that allows more light in and to the photonic engine which uses software to enhance the images taken. Compared to my previous 12 Pro Max, the telephoto is now a 3x camera 
which doesn't sound like a huge bump, and it isn't, but thanks to Apple's processing, the telephoto is now capable of capturing a lot more detail. Just check out this comparison between the 14 Pro Max and 12 Pro Max telephoto. The selfie camera can now also focus instead of being just fixed focus. One thing I enjoy doing is shooting 2x photos, which is basically just a cropped image from the 48 megapixel main camera. This means I can frame each photo exactly how I want it, having a choice of 0.5x, 1x, 2x, and 3x, all of which are going to be 12 megapixel images. One thing that's bugging me about the 14 Pro Max cameras that just wasn't the case on the 12 Pro Max is that whenever I try to take pictures outside of airplane windows, which I do a lot because I love it, the phone just has tremendous trouble focusing. If you want a more in-depth look at the camera of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, check out my comparison between the 14 Pro Max and the 12 Pro Max cameras. That video is going to be linked in the pinned comment down below. Quickly before moving on, please do like the video and leave a comment if you're finding it helpful. Also, do remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. All of these things really do help me out tremendously on YouTube, so I just want to thank you. On to the battery, I'm happy to report that it manages to last the whole day no matter what I throw at it. Taking photos seems to use up the battery really fast due to all of the processing it does, but it seems to me that Apple optimized this in an update. I also seem to have gotten a dud because less than half a year after I got it, I only have 96% battery health while my girlfriend's 14 Pro, which was bought the same day, still has 100% battery health. In the end, I can't really complain though. It definitely lasts more than my previous 12 Pro Max. The dynamic island is honestly a defining feature and what makes the iPhone 14 Pro Max stand out and worth upgrading to. Instead of the notch, which just took up space and wasn't useful at all, Apple basically developed a secondary screen around the dynamic island. While at first, when the iPhone launched, you could use it to control and see information at a glance from stock apps, now a bunch of apps have taken use of it through live activities and show you things like the ETA for your rideshare in the case of Uber, how long until your flight departs or lands in the case of app in the air, live sports scores, and many other useful at a glance info. I just really hope that this doesn't just die off like the MacBook Pro touch bar did. So there you have it. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is obviously not perfect, but when you look at it as a whole package, I still feel that it does enough right in order to be worth buying. Thank you guys for watching and thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Make sure to visit their website and order your PCBs using my link in the description down below. I'll catch up with you in the next video. Stay tuned.